hello guys welcome back to another video so today i've got for you a first on this channel which is a mini cooper um yeah i can't believe it took this long to get one but um yeah it's finally here so um this particular car comes with a registration number yj14 xbb it's a mini cooper countryman so it is the uh, big suv ish one um it comes with a start stop technology it is finished in this absolutely gorgeous shade of blue it is um it's basically classed as an suv um it's petrol it's got a 1.6 liter uh engine it puts out 119 brake horsepower and it was first registered on the 1st of march 2014. um it's got a valid mot until the 6th of august 2025 so although we are on the 25th of july it's got m more than 12 months mot basically because um when you do the mot here um, depending on the date that you do it, you could actually gain an extra two weeks. So um, when I went through the MOT, um, it basically gained an extra two weeks, I think. So it's got more than 12 months MOT. Um, it's got a road tax of 190 pounds per year, which is not bad considering the size of the car and um, obviously the, uh, the engine. Um, it's a 14E insurance group, so it's very low on the insurance bracket as well. And basically, that means that it's not going to cost you a fortune to run it. Now, over here, this is actually from when it's been washed, so that could be cleaned. Well, it will get cleaned. Um, so there's, there's nothing on it. Um, it's literally just how it's been washed, so I'll, uh, I'll get that cleaned off. Um, anyway, moving, moving on. So um, it has a CO2 output of 140 grams per kilometer. And in terms of uh, fuel economy, it's not bad either. So it does about 38 miles to the gallon around town and 54 miles to the gallon on a motorway run, which is phenomenal, um, with a combined uh, fuel consumption of about 47 miles to the gallon. Um, has a top speed of 118 miles per hour and it has a knock to 60 time of 10.5 seconds. So it's not it's not the fastest thing out there, but it's not slow either. I mean, at 10 seconds, it's not bad, given the fact that, like I said, it is classed as an SUV. Um, it does come with um, a really good service history, and it's just been serviced as well. It comes with two keys. Obviously, it comes with three months warranty as standard, which you can upgrade if you want to either 6, 12, or 24. Um, let's have a look. Oh, actually, I blocked it. Um, that's the key. Um, like I said, it does come with two keys. You just press the unlock button and it just unlocks. And have a look inside. It is absolutely gorgeous in here. So you've got full electric windows. Seats are in absolutely lovely condition. As you can see, there's no tears or rips or anything like that anywhere on the seats. Um, glove box. It's quite a decent sized glove box and... I believe that in there is for aircon, yeah. So, um, oh, and it's got a USB port in there as well. So basically, if you turn your AC on, um, you can put a sandwich or something like that in there, and it will just keep it cool. Um, and, and yeah, it's just not gonna spoil basically. Um, so yeah, like I said, electric windows materials are really, really soft. I really like the uh, the materials they've used. I mean, yeah, obviously it's. Uh, it's a good product, courtesy of BMW. Um, moving over to the rear. Oh yeah, one other thing I like about it is that it's got the rear windows tinted. It's not a very dark tint, but it's enough to keep children or people who sit in the back nice and cool. Um, um, electric windows on the rear as well. And again, seats absolutely lovely as you can see um, in the back here you do get a couple of cup holders in there and you get a 12 volt socket which is great because then people in the back can charge their phones tablets and whatever else they have um, you got a couple of pockets on the back of the seats uh, and as you can see you got lumbar support for the driver as well as well as for the passenger so that is cool because I do not want to drive a car without lumbar support anymore. Um, alloys, really good condition as well. No problems at all. That's your fuel cap. 
and moving over to the rear you do get parking sensors on the rear as you can see here and yeah the big mini cooper badge and countryman written along the side of the uh, boot so to open the boot you have to lift the mini badge like that and then it just opens up and it's a very decent sized boot as well so well again like i said it is classed as an suv so you do get a decent sized boot but don't forget it is still a mini although it's classed as an suv it's still a mini so the, the, it's not going to be range rover so um over here you got yet another 12 volt socket if you want to plug in a fridge or a vacuum or something like that it's fantastic you get these little hooks on each side if you want to hang over your groceries um just to stop your stuff from rolling around and you get this false floor here which opens up and reveals some more storage underneath as well and this comes out and you can probably put it well not probably you can definitely put it down so you get more um, more space um, the seats do come with isofix points um, these are for your child seats that you can fit on the two outer uh, rear seats and to close it you've got these handles either on the right or on the left and just pull on that and the boot just closes um, again alloys absolutely lovely look over to this side it's pretty much the same as the other side well not pretty much it's exactly the same as the other side um but just want to show you that the seats are in absolutely lovely condition and you've got this little pull tab here where you can uh, pull on that and just fold the seats down i won't be able to do that with one hand um but yeah you just gotta believe me um and coming over to the driver's side um, you do have your controls for all four windows as well as the controls for the mirrors and down there you that's your seat adjustment to put the seat up or down that's to um, drop the the back um, down or just move it forward and that's your pull handle to move the seat forwards or backwards um, let me go back on the other side because I want to open the bonnet for you as well just so you can have a quick look at the engine it's not much to see there because it's it's over here let's pull on that and that just pops the bonnet up um pretty much all covered in plastics and stuff so to pop the bonnet up you've got a latch just underneath the mini logo pull on that and it just pops right open it's got these gas struts to keep it up and yeah that's your engine now with the engine because i did get this asked by a few people um with the engine bay now as you can see as if you've seen any of my other videos you know the cars are in really good condition that's because i spend hours on detailing them cleaning them i do that myself along with my dad um because if you take it to a car wash they'll just do it in like five minutes and off you go and it's not going to look the way we prepare the cars but there's one thing i am very hesitant to do and that is the engine bay now usually you would expect to pop the bonnet and have all shiny plastics and make it look nice and stuff now that's all good because at the first impression it looks like yeah it's a very very well maintained car however when you pop the bonnet up and you see a very very clean engine bay that should be a slight red flag and i'm the reason i'm saying that is because if the engine bay is very clean it could have had a massive oil explosion everywhere and somebody just cleaned it completely to, to cover it up um, or it could have any other issues that by cleaning it you're trying to cover it on the other hand i had customers coming over and they popped the bonnet up and they saw that for example like this one okay it's clearly it's could do with a bit of a bit of a wipe um but i've had customers coming over they looked at it and say oh this is this has been a very neglected car no it's it's an engine you, it's not you're not meant thank you for putting that there mini 
You're not meant to wash it, okay? Because there's loads of electronics, computers, and gizmos and gadgets and stuff that you're not meant to, to mess with, right? Leave it the way it is, okay? Um, and I've said that to my customer. I said, look, see, um, just the fact that it's been... Um, it hasn't been cleaned. It doesn't mean it's been neglected. It's been that it means that somebody didn't want to mess with it to break some something else, some other electronics. You put water in there and water goes to one of those wires. You're going to pay BMW because basically they're one and the same. You're going to pay BMW thousands upon thousands of pounds for them to try and diagnose where the issue is coming from. And nine times out of ten, they probably won't even figure it out because there's water on one of the wires and probably it's got thousands of miles of wires in these cars so yeah leave the engine alone okay that's why i don't clean the engine you can see here hopefully you can see it i don't know if you can i don't know if this thing is going to focus but the end the engine oil is very clean like i said it's literally just been serviced there's no mayonnaise in the coolant tank so I'm trying to do this with one hand and it's not easy. You can see it's all clean, nicely maintained. You've got the uh, coolant there. So like I said, there's no mayonnaise, there's, there's nothing, right? Taking care of an engine doesn't mean washing it and cleaning it. It just means making sure you maintain it properly, change the oil on time, um, check the coolant, change the brake fluid do all these maintenance things and the car should last you for a long time especially if they're like chain driven engines you need to make sure you change the oil because anyway right i need to keep presenting this car but anyway that's the engine <laughs> and yeah pop the bonnet down sorry that was a bit of a rant well not, not a rant but just wanted to set some expectations basically right jumping inside the car let me just get the key out key um jumping inside the car oh, absolutely lovely in here let me just put the seat back a little bit oh perfect right so down here you've got your key slot and then your start stop button in there you've got your main uh rev counter there um and then this is your speedometer which is really cool i really like the way they put that there um and then you've got all your warning lights and everything in there so let's just start this up key in the ignition foot on the clutch press the start button all the lights come on as they should and then all the lights go off as they should the only two lights that are still on is the fact that i'm not wearing my seatbelt and the fact that the handbrake is up that's literally it. The car runs absolutely beautiful. As you can see, it's covered 103,016 miles. So it's not an awful lot of miles, especially for a, um, for a, well, essentially a BMW engine. But anyway, it's a Mini. Um, over here, you've got a multifunction steering wheel. So this is your controls, your volume up and down. This is where you select your stations. That's your voice command and your phone and over here is your cruise control and you can see that whoever had the car previously they've used it quite a bit as this um black paint is starting to peel off a little bit but it's still um visible so that's where you turn it on uh up for increased speeds minus for decrease and then that's the resume if you've cancelled it um as you can see the uh rev counter so it's bang on what it should be it's not fluctuating or anything it's absolutely beautiful um over there you've got your uh lights and you do have a um auto feature as well so you can automatically turn the lights on um you can select that and right now the lights went actually if we turn this off see how everything goes dark if you if i put them to auto love how that lights up as well it's really cool really really cool um so yeah and obviously you've got your indicator stock here and over there is your um wiper stock for the front and the rear as well all right moving over to the um main display this is something you won't be able to unsee doesn't this thing look like mickey mouse with the two ears on the side and a big head <laughs> yep good luck on seeing that now <laughs> and 
uh, over here you've got your hazard lights, you've got two air vents on the side, and you've got your main digital display here, along with the um, speedometer, like I said. Now, to um, operate it, it's not touch screen, so you won't be able to press it. You do have a little joystick down here, um, and you just rotate that like that, and that just moves over. So um, you've got your settings here. Control display, time and date, language, tone, speeds, lights, door locks, software update. Um, and then you've got your vehicle information. This is pretty good because then you can go down to journey computer and it gives you all the information about the mileage, consumption, speed and everything. Um, and then you can go to vehicle status, flat tire monitor confirm tire pressure and then you got your service required you go into there and then you can see that everything is exactly as it should um, and then you go down again check control no faults that's exactly what we like to see um, moving over so this is your mini connected I think this is like a, a online concierge service you've got your office which I don't know what that is actually Oh yeah, contacts. Okay, fair enough. Um, and then you've got your navigation over here. So you can set your navigation so that works. Um, then you've got your phone, radio. Okay, so you got your saved stations. And you got um, DAB, AM, FM. Let's say, let's say we go to save stations, and let's just turn the volume up a little bit. Where's the volume? Am I doing something wrong? Yeah. Oh, just a second. It was working earlier. Um, I had to turn it down and just because I didn't want YouTube to strike my video basically when I started recording. BBC Leicester, I don't want BBC Leicester. All right, Capital UK. Okay. Am I missing something here? There's no CD. Radio. Oh, let me go to FM. Sorry, guys. Ah, here we go. So as you can see, that works absolutely fine. Um, just don't know what happened there. Anyway, keep moving. Um, over here, we've got the mini navigation system. Um, and that's your volume knob. Uh, and over here, you've got your... Um, um, I know it. I know it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, climate control. That's the words I was looking for climate control right so um that's for your span uh, for your uh, fan speed um go up or down and then you've got auto so you can set a temperature and it will keep it at that temperature that's your recirculate that's max um, that's where you choose where you want the air to come out from you got ac front uh, rear window defrost front window defrost and that's where you select your temperature let's just turn this off for now because i don't want any ac um i really like these buttons they're really, really cool. 
can you press on that? It shows on there. Uh, traction control off. Do not turn that off. Just leave it on. Um, that's your start stop. You can turn that off. Uh, that's to lock the the doors. That's your sport mode, which is really cool. Um, and over here, you've got uh, your front and rear window uh, uh, fog lights. Sorry. Um, over here, you've got a little cubby, which is quite deep, to be honest. Uh, and you've got yet another 12 volt socket. How many so far? Three, three, and a little mini. Well, I say little because it's an SUV, but anyway. Um, two cup holders here at the front. Good old six speed manual gearbox. Um, I'll, as always, I'm going to go through all the gears just so you can see that there's no crunches or anything like that. So, foot on the clutch first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and reverses. You have to go left, keep pushing, and that will engage reverse and then you've got your optical parking sensors in there as well which is cool because you can see not just here but you can see how close you are to the objects in the back um, these are the buttons that you use for the main display so this is what you like I've already showed you um, that is your home button you press on that and it just goes to your home screen and then this one is for your um, well, that's basically to go back to the uh, screen that you were previously um, it does have these little cool um, ambient lighting you can probably see it on the sides there it's glowing blue and it's glowing blue at the top there and it's glowing blue on the door handles as well which is really cool and over here you've got a handbrake which looks like an airplane uh, lever to be honest um, you've got an armrest and almost opens up and then you've got room there i think it was for a phone or something you can take that off um and then this lifts up and down there that's really cool you have a sunglass holder it's really cool so press on the side and just pops open like that so you can put your sunglasses in there which is really really cool nice and it's got the little mini logo as well which is great right let's put this down I do love about this thing, um, the armrest, because it is adjustable. You can see it's quite low now, but it's got one, two, three levels. So um, depending on how tall you are, you can adjust this. Over here, you got a um, you got the rear view mirror, which is uh, auto dimming, which basically means that if you've got somebody with high beams behind you, then the mirror will automatically adjust itself. It's going to dim itself just so it doesn't blind you, basically. And then at the top here, you've got some more of those airplane style switches to turn your lights on and off, basically. Oh, that was for the rear light. There it is. Um, honestly, I say rear light, but it's right above my head. Huh. Is that supposed to be for the rear? Because it's, it's literally, it's, it's, it's about, it's in front of the B pillar. Anyway, well, more light for the driver. Happy days. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, everything works exactly as it should. Anyway, shush. Um, over here, you've got a vanity mirror and you've got the two, I think these are the brightest lights I've seen on any vanity mirror. I don't understand why they would have put lights so bright in there, but anyway. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I think that's, that's all I can tell you about it. Um, it. Like I said, it drives absolutely beautiful. There's no issues whatsoever. Um, actually, let's just go and park this little beast, shall we? Oh, just noticed something else. So. Over here, you've got, like I said, you've got this blue um, ambient lighting, but down there, these are illuminating orange. So that's, that's really cool. Right. Close that down. Go to ultra wide. And where should we go? Where should we go? Probably just park it in there somewhere. Yeah. Right. Put on the clutch. Going to first, put the airplane down, and we've got somebody that literally drove right in front of us. 
Uh, right, let me park it in there somewhere. I haven't got any more room in there, I know that for sure. Huh? There's one, two, three, four. Four cars in there. Sure, there should have been five spaces in there. Actually, let's just check. Taking you on for a ride. Ooh, nearly hit this guy's range over. Nope. I don't think I have space. Yes, no, I do. Yes, I do. I do, I do, I do. Next to my Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. I've got more room. That way you can see the lights work as well. There we go. Right, reverse, and now you're going to be able to hear the parking sensors kick in as well, which is great. Try not to get too close. There it is. And you can hear the little bonks. Anyway. That's it. All right, we have landed. Let me lift this off. Right, that's uh, pretty much it. Very thrilling ride for the whole ten seconds that it lasted. Um, yeah, if you if you are interested, look look how cool it looks in the back as well. I mean, it's still not dark outside, but once it gets dark, this ambient lighting is going to look really really nice. Okay. Um, anyway. Um, Sorry it's a bit long, uh, but then again, I tried to cover pretty much everything in the car. Um, not sure I covered everything, but I tried. Um, if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to contact me. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, you can find me on 01684 355032. You can uh, have a look at the car at vindemautos.co.uk or you can just email me at vindemautos at gmail.com. Thank you very much for your time, guys. I appreciate you sticking here all the way to the end if you did. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, goodbye. Sorry. I need to grow up. <laughs> right. See you later. Bye.